Tuesday. Bill, good to have you with us. We were just talking about the indices kind of in this holding pattern. Crude also kind of similarly uh, range bound, I guess is the best way of putting it now. Natural gas, though, on the move, most recently tied to this Nord Stream 1 uh, pipeline reopening. This morning, we're hearing again about this uh, EU uh, agreement. Basically, countries have reached a deal on the emergency gas plan. Talk to us about what's front and center here now when we're talking energies for you. Yeah, look at the natural gas. I think it's spiking right now about half a buck. Uh, while, I was, while I was listening, going through uh, you going through your your rundown there, so it's, it's on the move here. I don't know if there's any new developments, but really it started last week. It's Nord Stream coming back on yeah. one coming back online, but at a reduced capacity. You know, it, it's it's that sort of narrative where you know reducing the capacity so so uh, the EU states don't cannot really uh, build um, for the winter, and that's that's going to put them in a really tough place. Um, you know, later this year, and that's that's really the showdown there. Um, that's been driving this market. Uh, I, we've been trading call spreads in natural gas, trying to take advantage of these sharp dips. You know, when when you had the the big uh, Freeport sort of fallout, that was a big catalyst pushing that thing down. Um, or you know, through the end of June. But uh, there's opportunities as long as you're patient. In this market, I think we'll see ten dollar natural gas. Um, going back to uh, you know starting starting you know crude oil as well. You, uh, you mentioned. Holding pattern there. I, I like the consolidation that we're seeing in crude oil. Um, you know, I highlighted out in a note to my clients yesterday an inverse head and shoulders pattern that <clears throat> was really beautifully pinged yesterday morning. You have uh, the the about ninety three dollar low that took place a couple weeks ago, and then that that sort of really precipitous selling overnight down to ninety dollars. I think that was a combination of Libya coming back online. And as we re recovered, we couldn't get to the 21-day moving average over last week, but this fallback retested into about 93 and a half, 94 bucks. Um, a lot of support there, building out that right shoulder and strengthening now. So if we get back above, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure the 21-day moving average is today. It might be around 98 bucks. Um, you know, if we get through there and then really, you know, 100 and a half, I, I think there's going to be some massive tailwinds in crude oil from a technical perspective there. So I, I'm I'm very bullish on you know, this from this level. I think there's a lot of value. Ninety five dollars in, in crude oil is a big area. Um, no, now hold, back hold on one sec. Let me unpack some of that because I want to I want to dive into that and provide a little bit of a visual. The crude chart real quick in terms of you mentioned the support level that we're at right now. Somewhat bullish on this. I, I'd in many ways agree if we can find a little bit of a, a bottom here and start to build some momentum, especially if we were to get back up through 110, 115, 120, we could ultimately retest the upper extreme, that 130 level. I do also want to just point out, you mentioned the spike that we just saw in natural gas. And as we started off the show, you can see again up and through the nine and a half dollar level. Now, this has been playing out over the last couple of days, though. I saw Europe's benchmark. They've been up double digits the last couple of days, up around 25 to almost 30 percent the last five days headed into this morning. Um, we're back to levels we haven't seen since mid-June. I mean, Bill, real quick, this ties directly into uh, what we were just talking about in terms of the DAX coming off, the euro currency coming off. I mean, ultimately, the, this energy crisis that Europe is dealing with yeah that's that's what's driving I, I think it's less on the less on the dollar strength itself I mean usually the US dollar right. can top at the early stages of a hiking pattern or hiking cycle um, so I, I think this the euro I mean really is what's driving the dollar higher it, and it, it's this energy crisis that's taking place now and it's going to be really ugly this winter so I mean that 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 right there is creating a currency crisis within itself and so the it puts the Fed in an interesting spot here this this week. You know, they it was some potential peak inflation. You know, do they use that as an opportunity to kind of cool the the, the run of the dollar? Um, that, that'll be interesting to see. But yeah, this is the energy crisis in Europe. I think driving the currencies really more than anything. It's going to slow growth. They're going to have to shut down um, industrial output. You know, to, to conserve energy, ration energy. You know, and that that right there is just all going to be. I think somebody noted last week one of the ECB members was. You know, only a one and a half percent of GDP. Um, you know, I think that's that's pretty, you know, okay. To, you know, I, I would think maybe much worse than that, but that's what they're looking at if they have to start um, conserving energy. So it's it's an interesting situation. It's going to be a very very big showdown this winter, and that and those reduced flows from Nord Stream One coming back online is is I, I think really been the very bullish driver here. Um, you know, for the past week. Sure seems to have supported prices. They were coming off. It, it seemed like initially on the news that they were going to reopen the pipeline, but then we found out it's only 40% thereof. And now we're hearing of this new turbine, which could cut flows another 50%. So, again, it's not looking good in terms of uh, Putin uh, having his hand on the, the valve, the shutoff valve there. Uh, it seems to not be tightening. Not by accident.
Yeah, no, no, understood. And we heard from that the ECB, the EC president, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, talked about how basically they're being uh, blackmailed. Essentially, I think uh, was the word that was used. So, so again, a situation developing there that should be closely watched. Obviously, is the impact on the DAX, the impact on the indices there, and the currency as well. And the, I like how you bring in uh, the ripple effect there that it has on the U.S. dollar because that's been one of our focal points over the last few weeks. In addition to now, I want to kind of uh, dive a little bit more into that because if you got the dollar here, which is being supported by some of those weaker foreign currencies, crude oil, which is being, again, uh, supported by some of the technical levels as well as the fundamentals you pointed to and potentially higher prices to come there. Where does that leave us as far as that peak inflation discussion? Because while we've seen some of the other commodities come off, grains, for example, some of the metals like copper we've been watching in that uh, tailspin, it slowed, it seems like, last week a little bit. But, I mean, where do you see us in terms of that peak inflation discussion with crude still hovering around $100 a barrel? Well, if you look at where where much of these many of these commodities were at the start of the month of July, they were a lot higher than the where True that. where they are today. So I think it's it just is sort of a rebound. Look, gasoline prices fell 25 to 30 yeah. percent from their peak. I mean, copper. I mean, just from where it was to start, um, you know, the month. I mean, we we're we're much lower still. We're another 30 cents lower, so it's another 10 percent. So the, even even a bounce back, which I, I do anticipate a bounce back. Um, I think there's been cons some constructive bottoming patterns. And um, I'm long. I'm long building a position in copper from lower. I'm looking. I'm, I'm long crude oil, like I mentioned. I, I think there's definitely going to be a good rebound here. Um, I, I'm, I'm managing my risk, staying nimble with with knowing the Fed is around the corner here. And, and if they if they come in much more hawkish uh, than anticipated, then yeah, we're going to see continued de deterioration in the commodity landscape. The Bloomberg Commodity Index it, it's rebounded as it was down as much as 20 percent. It's it's only down about about 15, 16 percent right now. So I, I am bullish from commodities at, at these levels. I think there's going to be a rebound. And, and I do believe that the U.S. dollar does top out in, in the early stages of a hiking cycle. And what's been the problem is where the goalposts have continued to be moved. I mean, it's been the euro driving it, but also the fact that the inflation has remained um, steadfast higher. It, it's They've had to move these goalposts to become more hawkish. If you look out to 2023 right now, um, the, the, the odds really are for us to to finish this year at three, three and a quarter to three and a half. Um, and you see in June, the highest probability is is a basically a 3% a, a rate. So they're, they're starting to see, see some signs where the rate market's pricing a potential cut by, you know, middle of next year, or at least the Fed just, you know, clearly slow down this pace of hikes after, I mean, yeah, after September. So um, I, I think if these goalposts stop being moved, it's going to it's going to weaken the dollar. It's going to underpin commodities. I think it will underpin the equity market. Um, I don't I don't have a position in in equity futures right now. You highlighted 4016 on last week, and that that's our rare major four star resistance was our upside target. Um, and, and our morning note to clients for weeks now, looking for this rebound to, to play out. Very constructive holds of the 21-day moving average, got out above the trend line resistance to the 50-day, and look, we're right back to the scene of the crime for that that. Well, that Thursday close prior to the, the May CPI release in June, and and it didn't quite cover the gap. I think it missed it by like half a point, but but it covered the gap. And and then you know sellers came in, and, and now we're consolidating. One thing I'm, I noted in this morning to to clients is we're consolidating equities out above that that open from uh, or that that June 10th there, which is Friday where we or sorry the Monday where we where we really continue to sell off further, and we're just holding you know out above this level. So I think that's that's constructive. Um, you know, as we consolidate and go into into the Fed, um, you know, here this this week, and you know, I, another thing I'm watching very closely is gold and silver. I think there's quite a bit of value down here there. Well, uh, I do want to talk about gold real quick because it has been hovering around 1725, 1730-ish, uh, but uh, below 1750. I just before I do wanted to get your thoughts because it ties a little bit more directly into what we were just talking about in terms of Russia, uh, Putin having his hands on the controls in many ways, uh, in many instances. Uh, we've seen wheat and grain prices come off quite a bit. I know in terms of the commodities quadrant, you keep an eye on that sector as well. And uh, again, not as heavily traded or participated in, but factors into the inflation discussion and uh, kind of ties directly to what we were just talking about in terms of crude. I mean, I think it's important to remind our viewers that uh, obviously headline news is still a factor to consider here. We've become a little bit callous to the Ukraine situation and, and the war that they've been dealing with there and uh, Russia's attack on them. But ultimately, we've heard a little bit more about it over the last week or so. It's kind of come back into discussions here. And we've been talking about these grain exports or the flows out of Odessa, apparently. 
apparently. And now, you know, you've got Putin saying, hey, look, we're going to let them through. But then apparently there's bombs flying and kind of creating this disruption as they attempt to do such. So we were talking about it a little bit yesterday on the show, kind of talking out of both sides of his mouths in terms of sticking with the trend as far as what we've seen from President Putin in Russia. So I guess point being here, we, yes, grain prices, energy prices and all of that have come off. But ultimately, we're still talking about a very volatile situation and a very fluid and uncertain situation as well. Absolutely. Very, very volatile. Um, you know, we've seen you know, bond, bonds have moved higher. I mean, I don't think that's just, you know, the, the, uh, the peak inflation. I think you're, you're getting some, some risk premium potentially in there as well. But, um, you know, associated with China, what could be around the corner there, yeah. Taiwan, Taiwan, you know, and, and, yeah. and what's, yeah, what's going on there. But, um, you know, wheat, I, I think wheat has some upside, you know, but it, but it's it could be limited. I mean, just looking from a median of where this has traded over the last decade, um, I'm a little more bullish from these levels in, on corn, I mean, and we've kind of nibbled into some positions here from from what, we're, what I'm managing and and looking at um, you know a little upside. I mean, it potentially uh, lower lower uh, you know, crop yields than than anticipated uh, could drive up you know in, in corn. So there's other factors um, that could be driving this market rather than just just the Russia and Ukraine narrative. But I think the Russia and Ukraine narrative does give a little bit of. Uh, premium should be come, coming back. I'm surprised wheat hasn't traded a little bit higher this week mm -hmm. after that. So it's going to, like you said, I think you, the, the great word to describe it is fluid. It's a very fluid mm -hmm. situation where you got to, you know, stay nimble and, and, and sort of, uh, you know, see how these, these events develop. All right, all of these below the 50-day moving average, wheat, green, wheat, beans, and corn. Lastly, again, let's talk about uh, gold right now because with the strength in the U.S. dollar, uh, gold uh, has come off a bit significantly. It got up to 109, the dollar did, gold back below 1,700, and since then it's really struggled to recover. Some of the other metals as well, copper you touched on briefly. I mean, we've seen silver as well back to the $18 level. I mean, metals have really come off, whether you're talking about the industrial side or those that are oftentimes seen as those beneficiaries of the safe haven trade, just not really, uh, it seems like the flavor of choice this month or last couple months, one could argue. Yeah, the uh, today is the expiration of options for gold uh, okay. and silver for the month of August. Now, August is a big contract for gold. And it's, it's not as big as June and, and December and typically, you know, not really as big as February either. Um, so it's not, you know, a massive expiration. When, when that June expiration happens, you know, we've been over the last few years, and I, I just broadly speaking, say like four of the last five years, you know, we've seen a good bottom come in, in June and, and strong rallies through, okay. through July because of that expiration. In, in the past, seasonality has been favorable for gold. Um, through these autumn months, early autumn months, like after this August expiration, so through August, September, October. And, you know, I haven't been playing that seasonality because the rally is taking place in June, July. I think this year could be a little different where we do see, get through this options expiration. Now, think about every more aware of options when you talk about the, the gamma exposure in equities. Oh, okay, we broke this massive level, and these, now these now these puts, you know, market makers got to sell sell futures to cover their, their short put exposure, and, and, and that sort of feeds on itself. You get this bigger sell-off in the S&P. Well, it happens everywhere. I mean, look at gold right now. Just a couple weeks ago, gold was above 1,800 and haven't, hadn't really been below 1,800 really all year. So right. if you have this break below 1,800, there's between 18, um, I think it's like 1,800, 1,825 area down to 1,720, got 18,000 put contracts in the money here, which, you know, they're going to be unwound through this expiration today. So I see that as a bullish catalyst for gold. And then, you know, I don't know the numbers in silver, but I imagine something very similar. Silver really breaking through 20 and a half, 21 bucks for the first time. And this is this is a level it broke out at in 2020. So there's a lot okay. of support Some still key here. key support areas to keep an eye on, basically. Yeah, yeah okay. so I think as we unwind we this, you're going to get a bullish move out of the metals here. Okay, in the weeks. similarly kind of uh, uh, located right now is crude, testing this key support area again, gold, silver as well. Appreciate you joining us, Bill. We'll keep an eye on some of these commodity products and uh, thanks for giving us part of your Tuesday. Bill Baruch from Blue Line Futures. We're going to take a quick break.